Available now. Link below. Thank you for joining us as we dive deep into the scathing assessment of AOC's leadership by none other than the legendary shark, Kevin O'Leary, a.k.a. Mr. Wonderful. With his razor-sharp business acumen and no-nonsense approach, O'Leary pulls no punches as he calls out AOC's horrific management skills and the dire state of her district, which he likens to a third-world country. From the devastating Amazon debacle to the growing discontent among her constituents, the evidence of AOC's failing is mounting. But that is just the tip of the iceberg. As we peel back the layers of this shocking story, you'll discover the true extent of the damage caused by AOC's mismanagement. And trust me, you don't want to miss my final thought on this game-changing revelation. Now, folks, let's take a moment to address a critical issue that, much like AOC's mismanagement, threatens the very foundation of our nation. While we focus on the shortcomings of our elected officials, we must not forget the looming crisis of nickel dependency. Just as AOC's district relies on her leadership, the U.S. relies entirely on imports for this essential metal. However, there is hope on the horizon. Alaska Energy Metals is poised to become the largest domestic nickel producer, committed to environmentally responsible mining and breaking free from foreign dependence. Just as we demand better leadership from our representatives, we must also support American critical metals independence. Visit alaskaenergymetals.com to learn more and take a stand for our nation's future. You'll find the link in the description. Now, Kevin O'Leary, the renowned business mogul and star of Shark Tank, has unleashed a scathing critique of Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez leadership Known for his no-nonsense approach and keen business insights, O'Leary's assessments of AOC's performance is a reminder of the importance of effective management in the halls of power. Now, O'Leary, who recently appeared on the Maintaining with Tyrus podcast, well, he held nothing back as he dissected AOC's track record while acknowledging her undeniable prowess as a politician and her mastery of social media. He swiftly pivoted to the glaring issues that plague her district. Her jurisdiction is like a third world country. That's what he declared, painting a vivid picture of the stark contrast between AOC's online presence and the reality on the ground. See for yourself. I look at AOC, what an incredible, incredibly successful politician she is, and what a horrific manager she is. Her her jurisdiction looks like a third world country, and and yet she's great at social media and, and making outrageous statements and getting $5 at a time on you know, every way she can on social, good for her. But wow, look what she did when Amazon came knocking for 10,000 Yeah, that jobs. to me blew my mind. How does that I mean, you survive? So, so why would you want to reward that? Why wouldn't you say, excuse me, could I get better management, please? I live here. I pay taxes here and I'd like a job. And I don't think you're doing a great job for me as a manager. How about I hire somebody else? That's what I would encourage. Not that she isn't just great as a politician, there are countries that have weak leaders. There are states that have bad governors. I think people, the great thing about democracy is say, we can do better. Right. Putting up my head, let's do better. Do you think you, as you talk, I get this, not personal, it's just business. Just business. But everything is personal now. No, not for me. I mean, you what you did right there is you gave her a compliment in terms of her, her showmanship and how she does well on social media. And she's her, she used her platform. And then you criticized the deed. You're like She's you lost. Manager. Yeah, you're not, and well, that should. Which, be, but which that one makes is you? It? There's a lot of words I could throw. No, no, I agree with you. I'll say it with you. I'll say it. I don't. I'm like, who voted for this? And you can see it across the board. You can see it. It doesn't have to be AOC. We, you could take it a re- well, super she's Republican a guy. Example. Yeah, but she's which, a perfect example. Who cares I say about the that camera? Wasn't true. Is she a great nothing? Poli- she's a great politician. Let's celebrate that. Is she a bad manager? Hundred percent. She's terrible. They're both true. They so if she was true. a business. I wouldn't. Have that. <laughs> you, would you? Would you pass? Or would she? Would no, on let, Shark Tank? Let would me she be, be specific? Yeah. I wouldn't let her manage a candy store. Wow. <laughs> the Amazon debacle, which unfolded early in AOC's tenure, serves as a prime example of her managerial shortcomings. As O'Leary pointed out, AOC's vocal approach to Amazon's plans to establish a headquarters in Queens ultimately led to the company's decision to abandon the project. This move not only cost her district thousands of potential jobs, but also deprived it of the economic benefits that would have accompanied such a significant investment. Tyrus, the host of the podcast, echoed O'Leary's sentiments, expressing his disbelief at AOC's ability to weather such a catastrophic misstep. That blew my mind. That's what he said, wondering how she could possibly survive politically in the wake of such a fiasco. Well, O'Leary, 
Equally perplexed, question why constituents would continue to reward such poor management. Why wouldn't you say, excuse me, could I get better management? I live here, I pay taxes, I want a job, right? That's what you question, emphasizing the need for accountability in leadership. As the conversation delved deeper into AOC's managerial cap capabilities, O'Leary delivered a stinging indictment that left no room for interpretation. When Tyrus asked if Mr. Wonderful would pass on AOC if she were to appear on Shark Tank, O'Leary's response was as swift as it was damning. I wouldn't let her manage a candy store. As we declare, of course, the laughter underscoring the absurdity of entrusting AOC with even the most basic of managerial tasks. Now, the consequences of AOC's mismanagement extend far beyond the realm of lost economic opportunities. As O'Leary pointed out, her district has begun to resemble a third world country. A reminder of the real world implications of ineffective leadership. Businesses, deterred by the instability and lack of support, are fleeing the area, leaving behind a trail of shuttered storefronts and dashed hopes. Meanwhile, AOC's constituents are left to bear the brunt of her policy decisions, the dreams of prosperity and security slowly slipping away. Now, it's a tragic irony that AOC, who rose to prominence on the platform of economic justice and empowerment, has presided over the decline of her own district. Her inability to translate her social media savvy into tangible results for her constituents raises serious questions about her priorities and her understanding of the complex dynamics that drive economic growth. So, as the nation grapples with the fallout of AOC's leadership, it's crucial that we heed the warnings of those like Kevin O'Leary, who have built their careers on the principles of sound management and responsible stewardship. We can't afford to let the allure of viral sound bites and Twitter fame blind us to the harsh realities on the ground. The fate of our communities and indeed our nation hangs in the balance. If you got value from this report, tap subscribe. My final thought is next. As we reflect on the scathing assessment of AOC's leadership by Kevin O'Leary, it becomes abundantly clear the stakes haven't been higher. We find ourselves at a crossroads forced to confront the harsh reality that the very future of our nation hinges on the choices we make in the voting booth. Will we continue to be swayed by the siren song of social media savvy and empty promises, or will we demand more from those who seek to represent us? The time has come for us as citizens of this great republic to hold our elected officials accountable, to demand that they prioritize the well-being of their constituents above all else. Let the cautionary tale of AOC's mismanagement serve as a wake-up call, a rallying cry for a new era of leadership that places competence, integrity, and the American dream at the forefront. The choice is ours. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Now keep up your quest for truth with this next news report. And if you found our channel enlightening, join the millions who agree with you. Tap subscribe. Thank you for watching the Next News Network.